Did you I see always Martha wanted... Mitchell as a hero or a villain or somewhere in between? I didn't see her at all is, is, is what I'm kind of building up to. I mean, I, I really, <laughs> in all the contemporaneous accounts and all, all the, you know, uh, John Dean's book, uh, it, it, any of these accounts, Martha Mitchell is really sidelined a lot. And, um, you know, I wanted to make a show about the people around Nixon for a while, and it wasn't to, nobody really bit until Leon's podcast came along. And what it did was really center Martha in the scandal. And that was such an inspirational thing to hear, um, especially because I knew about her, but it, 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 she f always felt tangential. And I think that was by design. Um, and then I started reading more and more about Martha Mitchell uh, once I got the show going and, you know, reading not only Martha's biography, but also, you know, like Nora Ephron wrote about Martha Mitchell. Um, a, a lot of people who kind of judged her um, initially because she was complicit in all these, um, all of Nixon's schemes before she started telling the truth about Watergate and that I've always written about Southern conservative women because of that duality. I mean, that kind of, um, they, they're kind of, to me, they're kind of punk rock because they're women, but and you want to root to them. But to me as kind of a liberal, they're, they're, they're punk rock for the wrong side. And I think that, you know, I grew up with women like that. Um, and so when I'm writing Martha, I'm just writing, church ladies I grew up with and things like that. And, uh, you know, this show is really a study of complicity. And Martha is, because she was complicit in horrible things before Watergate and then started telling the truth, it's really kind of a complicated hero. And yeah, I, the, the reason I did it was because it needed to be told, it needed to be brought yeah. to a wider audience.